Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. <laughs> so let me ask you this then. Um, if mm -hmm. you can break this down to me, because once again, I've never been into the Glock firearms. Um, I don't understand the numbers. And when somebody rat rattles off a number to me, I actually got to text somebody or look it up and say, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Good question. So, Good question. So the Glock 17, to my, as far as how we designate the model numbers? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So the Glock 17, uh, that was Mr. Glock's 17th patent. That's how it came about the 17. Oh, nice. And it just went from there. The numbers just went from there. So 17, 18, 19, you know what I mean? That's how it, it, that's how it that's how it started. So it started with the Mr. Glock 17th patented, which the Glock 17 is what started it all. The Glock 17 was introduced by way of Shot Show around I think 1985, uh, and they went from there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so my question that I would tag on to to what that was a really good question for Mike. My question I would tag on to that. Is it still, it's, it stays sequential now, right? Is it like sequential according to invent, like when the that particular Glock was invented? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so like, you know, we, we, for an example, like when we came out with the G45 a few years ago, people thought it was a 45 auto, but it was actually a nine millimeter. But it was like, well, you had a G43 and you skipped the G44 and you went to G45. So everybody was wondering, well, why did y'all skip the Model 44? And go to the model 45 and mm -hmm. the reason the reason being was because the g44 which is now the 22 caliber right that mm -hmm. we just released uh it was still in research and development so we're still testing it making sure that you know everything is good to go one of the good things about glock is that you know we we, we don't put stuff out unless we feel that we can do it better than anybody else you know what i mean and so uh the 44 it wasn't up to glock standards so we skipped over it while we still worked on it, and we came out with the G45. Let me give you a little bit of history if I have time, Hank. I don't want absolutely, to man. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you got all the time in the world. Let me give you a little bit of history about the G45. So the G45 is a direct descendant of the Glock 19X. So the 19X, everybody's aware of, it was the gun that we designed for the military trials. It was it was designated the, the 19 MHS, which stood for Modular Handgun System, okay? Well, when the Army decided to go another route, uh, we had this great pistol that we thought, hey, this is a great pistol, and it got kind of got leaked out. And we figured, you know, some of our senior management were like, hey, well, hey, we got this good pistol. Well, and if our customers want it, why not release it to them? So mm -hmm. what they did, they took the, the, the military pistol, the MHS pistol, and they took – the only difference is between that gun and the 19X is that the MHS pistol had the uh, ambidextrous uh, manual safety on both sides. So we took the, the manual safety off of it, okay, and now we had the 19X, which is a hybrid gun. It has a 17-length grip mm -hmm. and then a 19-length slide, which a lot of people found appealing because I'm a little guy, so I don't have big old gigantic hands. So the 19 fits great in my hand. But okay. I've seen guys with big hands like you, Hank, with big hands. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't get uh, as much purchase on the frame because of the short grip of mm -hmm. the 19. So what we did with the 19X and the G45, we simply merged two of our best pistols, the Glock 17 and the Glock 19, and we just combined them together. We called them the crossover series. So we had a 17-length grip, so now those guys, even with bigger hands, can get a full purchase on the pistol. And then we had a compact length slide, the 19-length slide and barrel. So the 45 came around because when the 19X was was produced at SHOT Show years ago, I think 2016, everybody loved it, but they were like, can we get it in black? Now, go figure, Glock had hadn't made a gun in, that was colored in 25 years or so. Mm -hmm. And when we released the 19X in Coyote Tan, everybody said, oh, man, we love the gun, but can we get it in black? And I was like, you got to be shitting me, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I think yeah. I would be, I think I would count myself as one of those people that was like, yeah, so. I, yeah I mean, let, let, I like different colors. So I get people yeah, yeah. liking the different colors. I'm like that too. But I, I'll be honest with everyone. All my Glocks are black. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, I'm and like so, Wesley Snipes, man. Always been on black. Yeah, no doubt, right? So so so, so, uh, so the 19X was, was created at the request of the military, just how they asked for, mm -hmm. you know, 
And so now we had this gun on the civilian market now and a lot of police agencies who wear, you know, blue uniforms and green uniforms. They was like, well, I don't know if I want a, a tan gun in my holster. So there was a huge demand for the 19X in black. So what we did, we went back to the drawing board and we created the G45. Remember, we skipped the G44 and we went straight to the G45. Mm-hmm. And what the G45 was, it was just an, an all black version of the 19X with some what I call enhancement. So the G45, it came with the uh, beveled magazine wheel, flared mag wheel for, for easier and quicker reloads. And it also came with the front cocking serrations. And then later on, we introduced the G45 in the uh, MOS configuration so that we could run optics on it. So uh, I, I tell folks the difference between the G45 and the 19X is that the 19X is just it's brown. It has no flared mag well, it has no front cocking serrations, and it has uh, no MOS capability. So, oh, the G- okay. yeah, so the G45, man, give you a couple upgrades, no doubt. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Um, let me see. There's a couple of things I want to I want to get back to that. There's a couple of things. Uh, Elster's rifles and reloading said so sounds like someone has uh, some coronavirus in the background. That's Lola. The AC in here is not shutting off for some reason. So Lola, I think you know how to handle that situation. But it's not so far as me. I don't know. I don't know. Lola's working at the hospital. So at some point here, we're all getting coronavirus. <laughs> that's that's pretty much going to happen around here. Um, let me see. Uh, there's a couple of things. So Kathleen Music Music Lover says Glock 17 first number. So the 17 was the first number. Were there like 16 prototypes uh, before that? I don't know. I'm not sure whether or not that's something no, you could talk about. It was it was Mr. Glock's 17th patent. So Mr. Okay. Glock didn't make handguns pa- oh. prior to. Uh, he didn't make handguns prior to him oh. making the Glock 17 model. So let me give you a little history class real fast. Okay. Uh, Mr. Glock was an engineer by trade, and he. He, he made stuff like curtain rods and door handles and stuff like that. And then he went on to start making, uh, he, he was making machine gun bodies, I mean machine gun belts. Uh, he was making uh, grenade bodies. He was making a lot of different things, E-tools, knives, stuff like that. Uh, the Austrian military were in, they were looking for a, for a, uh, a replacement pistol for their aging Walter P-38 pistols. Mm-hmm. And the gun had to meet so many requirements okay it had to be this it had to be that it couldn't be this it couldn't be that so mr glock goes to the drawing board he comes up with a working prototype submits it to him he wins a four thousand unit contract and pretty much the rest is history wow Hmm. okay that's that's actually really cool um you know so what was do you know what patent number one was i'm just curious i don't i do not oh. know because <laughs> i want a I want a glock one i don't care if it was a curtain rod <laughs> yeah but mr glock he, he you know he made you know he made you know he made uh knives and e-tools and all those things before he ever started making pistols oh yeah that's oh. that's that's actually pretty awesome go ahead go ahead mike yeah i was gonna say so my question is the glock one look like it did today but a little bit more blocky yeah so the, the generation one glock that started it all right uh that was the generation one glock yeah uh, but and that but that is the glock 17 that's the glock 17 yeah the that's the glock, glock 17 was, yeah that was now, glock. over in austria it was mm-hmm. dubbed the, the the p80 that stood for pistole 80 and, okay uh, that was known as the glock 17 when it got to america uh mm-hmm. so the great thing about the system Mr. Glock came up with this revolutionized, call it the safe action system. So the system that he used, people freaked out. They were like, well, those guns don't have safeties on them. And what I told people, uh, it, I, I like to think of it as a souped up revolver. So mm-hmm. those people that carry revolvers, now all of a sudden they're, they're uncomfortable carrying a Glock pistol. Let me break it down to what I'm saying. So with a revolver, I tell these guys, I said, with a revolver, uh, you simply, to load it up, you open up the cylinder, you put the rounds in the cylinder, you close it up. If you want to turn it on, you do what? You simply press the trigger, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So to make it start up, you press the trigger. To make it stop, you get off the trigger. Well, take a Glock pistol. You take a magazine, you put rounds in the magazine, you insert the mag into the uh, into the frame, you chamber around to turn it on. Once again, you press the trigger to turn it off, you get off the trigger. Mm-hmm. So the Glock system it works very, very similar to a double action revolver. Now we have three built in safeties and people freak out because they're used to working a manual safety, but the safeties are built into the fire control system, the trigger safety, the firing pin safety and the drop safety. So as I put my finger on the trigger, 
and start to turn the system on by pressing the trigger, those safeties sequentially disengage one by one, trigger safety, fire pin safety, drop safety, gun goes bang, the gun does what it does, it, it goes through the cycle of operation, and then the safeties re-engage in reverse order so that when I get completely off the trigger, the gun is automatically back in safe mode just like a revolver. Hmm. Okay, very cool. Listen, I'm, I'm learning a lot of stuff. I'm, you know, this is actually pretty cool, man. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.